welcome inside the WOSN studios. Thank you for making us part of your day. It's press row. It's actually the final press row of 2015. So got a lot to recap heading into the new year and joined as always by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Let's begin looking ahead. Boys basketball this weekend. A couple of interesting games. Which one are you guys most focused on? Don't we go into like most weekends now with the holidays and everything? Yes. It seems like it, it at it least. It is, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, the only ones that really catch my eye this weekend is the is the QP Classic at Lima Senior. I know there are some other games that have some meaning, but I think it's a, a hugely attractive event for people that want to see high-end high school basketball with uh, Lima Senior taking on Hazelwood East out of St. Louis, a, a very high-scoring outfit coached by Lawndale Thomas, the former Spartan. Dayton Dunbar's coming in, Lakewood St. Ed, and, of course, Lima Senior uh, looking to be tested in this two-day event and back-to-back -back days by a couple of good teams, Hazelwood and then Dunbar. So uh, I think it's going to be a great weekend there at Lima Senior. Well, I, and you, you, we, we can't not talk about what Xavier Simpson did this past Tuesday sure. at Fremont Ross City School record with 59 points and Lima Seniors win over the Little Giants and made them look even smaller as they blew them out. But, you know, this is the Lima Senior team, just their second game of the season, blew, blowing out Fremont Ross and X. We've talked about this a little bit over over the summer and in the fall. You can see that X's game has developed. He has taken that game to another. He's a little bit taller. I think he's a legit six foot, maybe even pushing six one now. But he's worked on his outside game. That's part of the reason why he had the 59 against Fremont Ross was he's hitting from outside. But we're really starting to see the evolution of Xavier to something that could be a really special player, not on the high school level, but a special player at the next level too. One of the things with X that, you know, if I could compliment him on is he has gone into the weight room and he has bought into building his body. And he looks the part of a Division I point guard. He doesn't play the part. He also looks the part. And I think that that's paramount for him when he gets to the next level. But as far as the game, guys, no disrespect to Lima Senior, and if I wasn't doing Shawnee St. Mary's for the fine folks at WOSN Friday night, I'm in the Spartan Dome, and I'm watching Dayton Dunbar and Lakewood St. Ed. That is right. going to be rock'em, sock'em, high-quality basketball Friday yeah, night. Like That's I a said. 6 o'clock game yeah. Friday yes. night. You're talking about two of the best teams in the state, and obviously Lima Senior is one of the best teams in the state as well. So, yeah. I, that, that, that's going to be four games, two games on Friday, two games on Saturday. And Columbus, really Marion, Franklin is going to come yes. in on Saturday to play Hazelwood, you know, and that's a no slouch of a basketball program there as well coming from Columbus to play. Lakewood St. Ed was only able to commit to the Friday as they have a Saturday game. So, you know, this just adds to it, and I think it's something that it's great to see going on again uh, in the area. I want to say 2004, 2005 was the last year that, uh, that we had this event, and it was opening weekend. They've moved it to the middle of December, right at the holiday break. You're going to have a lot of people home. I think we're going to see packed houses at uh, one Spartan way on both nights. Yeah. Looking at a couple other games in the area, big one in the NWC this week, and we'll be able to say that each week going forward through the rest of the season, but Paulding versus Spencerville. Spencerville coming off the loss to Lincoln View. Great weekend for the Lancers last week, and maybe the NWC is not going to play out exactly as we predicted a month ago. Well, Spencerville, Zach Gokey's still not back in that game. And, uh, the he, longer... play, he, played, he played little, he had six points, and then he had four points against Ottaville the next night in a win. He's not 100% by any right. stretch of the imagine, but I mean, that link, I had a feeling, we talked about it on this show, you know, those teams had gone back and forth the senior class since the seventh grade. I, you know, the, if you look at the Northwest Conference, I mean, you look at one through six, and it is yeah. anybody's ball game. We've got to figure that Goki getting to full health is really paramount for Spencerville's chances. And the longer that he isn't, that, he, that they're playing league games, the more chance of them falling behind. I mean, they've already lost to Lincoln View. So this is huge for Spencerville uh, to get this Paulding game. And, you know, you're right. Every week in the NWC, we're going to have big matchups. We're looking forward to that one. Now, which holiday tournament are you guys most looking forward to? And I guess we'll exclude the Lima Senior one since we, we know we're, we're looking forward to that one. Are there any others over the couple weeks break we have? Bowl season. <laughs> That's not basketball. That's I know. not basketball. <laughs> There's a couple of good tournaments, though. <laughs> yeah, there are. Yeah. I, I would have to say the Vicky Mock Girls one is always a very, you know, it's, it's a very well-respected one, obviously, for what Vicky did at Elida and, you know, went through her courageous battle with cancer that, you know, ultimately took her life. But to see that go on, you know, like it has, and to go on in her honor, you know, and, and they get some decent teams that come down. Usually you get a team from Toledo. I can remember some Tiffin teams coming in. I believe Tiffin Columbian came in a couple of years ago, had a really strong program uh, that was a part of that as well. That one, I would say, just from the tradition aspect of it, is one that, you know, hey, if you're looking for a ball game, you want some good popcorn, go over to Elida and check that one out. 
What about the one in Mercer County with uh, Coldwater, St. Henry, Marion Local, Salina? I know. Coldwater and Marion Local play basketball? Yes, they're getting started <laughs> this weekend, yeah. actually. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, that one should be interesting. I mean, maybe it'd be more interesting if they were playing football, but I think those schools <laughs> respect each other on the basketball courts as well. And we'll be able to bring Park that one Parkway's to Parkway's got a good one, too, the Shat Holiday. Yeah. When Delphus Jefferson is a part of that, Fairlawn's in on that. Um, I can't remember who else is playing, and I was just looking at it yesterday. But uh, that's another solid one year in and year out that, you know, a nice little two day event. Versailles is their tournament as well. They're tournament right. in Bluffton. Plenty of tournament action. Yeah, plenty of good basketball to close out 2015 with. All right, moving on now to girls hoops and a big upset already in the Western Buckeye League. I don't know if I'd call that an upset. <laughs> well, it was only an upset in that it hasn't happened in five years. So Bath falling, snapping the 43-game Western Buckeye League win streak as OG defeats Bath. So has OG already won the Western Buckeye League? Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I think, uh, you know, uh, it's my understanding Katie Hempley might be a little banged up. That could be a hindrance for OG. I think Wapakoneta is lurking as maybe somebody that can handle them. I think it's clear that OG is the favorite, and I, I would think that they may have wrapped it up by beating Bath. But I don't want to just uh, say, you know, with a blanket statement after week one, you've got it done because a lot of things can happen. But no question, OG has stamped themselves as the favorite, and, and they've dethroned the queen, so to speak, knocking off Bath, and now it's uh, up to them to be the front runner and see if they can handle that. Speaking of Bath, they had a game that you did on uh, Tuesday night, mm -hmm. lost to Versailles. I mean, they're two losses, the Bath losses. Let's see here, OG Versailles, Division Three state champion runner up a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Plus Anna, a yeah, perennial Anna too. Division Three state tournament uh, yeah. in participant. So, you know, the, the Kittens are certainly rebuilding after losing five senior starters. Uh, I imagine at the end of the year, they'll be a lot better than they are now. But for OG, they've uh, still got eight WBL games to win before you can put it in the bank. Well, and if you look at the WBL standings right now, Salina, Wapkaneta, Defiance are kind of towards the top, each with at least six wins. Defiance and Wapkaneta both come into Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium later in the year. OG has to travel to Salina early in January. It'll be, I think, their second game after the holiday break. So whether they'll be able to get everything's back ready, get back into that groove, heading to the field house in Salina, that I think probably the true test in the Western Buckeye League. But I, I just I don't know if anybody can match up with the athleticism we see on the Lady Titans. Uh, you know, you go back to that win over Bath, the way they were able to force turnovers and really take control of that contest. It was a close game for the first half. In the second half, OG just asserted themselves, were forcing turnovers, getting a lot of transition buckets, and I don't know if there's anybody in the Western Buckeye League who can match up with that athleticism. Yeah, it's been the Titans MO last year and probably the year before as well, and helped them get to the state final last year. And Looking for them to make a, a good postseason run this year as well. All right, let's go to college hoops now. Ohio State not off to a very good start. They're four and five. They had a four-game losing streak earlier in the season. So I ask you this question: Who is the best college basketball team in the state of Ohio? Not in Columbus. No. Wow, that's a good question. Um, I guess it'd have to be Xavier. Or is it uh, Dayton? Or it could be Dayton. I mean, we need them to play each other. Uh, <laughs> that, that's coming, boys. Things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, right now, it's certainly not in Columbus. You could certainly argue that Cincinnati's better than yeah. Ohio State. Yeah, but that triumvirate of Southwest Ohio schools. But we're not asking who's the third best. Right, who's, who's the, the best? best? I'm going with Dayton. I, I'd say Dayton could be, but uh, Xavier maybe has uh, bragging rights. I guess we'll get to see. All, all due respect to Dayton, especially the win that they got over an SEC team in Alabama. I'm, I, when this question came out, Xavier came to mind. Dayton was second, you know, in my in as far as you know, which two schools right now. And then you know, the pack kind of widens out a little bit. But I've been very impressed with what I've seen. A very little, mind you, of Xavier. And then this weekend, watched was able to DVR their uh, win over UC and watch some of that. And uh, I, I like what uh, Chris Mack's doing. Uh, at Xavier and a lot of people that I have talked to as well have uh, you know just that are just basketball fans they're not in the know or anything like that they're like man if that guy could make the trip up 71 a little bit potentially as a replacement down the line I could be okay with that but we'll see what happens nonetheless I'll go Xavier right now Dayton second but they've got a matchup coming soon we'll see how that plays out well and speaking of replacements we now know there's going to be a replacement in Madison as Bo Ryan resigned effective immediately late on a Tuesday night He's got an interim coach for the Badgers for the rest of the way, but what Wisconsin does in the future could impact Ohio college basketball. There's some, some MAC coaches that are being discussed as possible replacements for Bo Ryan, but really, I, I, I don't know if, if some folks really appreciate what Bo Ryan has done at Wisconsin because you look at what the Badgers have done under Bo Ryan. A lot of NCAA tournament appearances every year, Big yep. Ten championships, not a whole lot of NBA players, only one McDonald's All-American 
Yet every year, Wisconsin was a very tough team and had plenty of Big Ten victories to boast. Well, they've, they've patterned their football and basketball teams in much the same way. Not a lot of hyped recruits. They have a system. They recruit to it. They use it. They utilize it to their advantage, and they keep winning. So you're right. Bo Ryan deserves a lot of props, and I think they're going to go with his guy. You know, Bo Ryan Greg engineered Gard the timing of this for Greg Gard to get the job, and I think he's boxed Barry Alvarez in. It's going to be Greg Gard. If it isn't, that'll be a huge surprise. So you're saying Barry Alvarez won't take over for the tournament? <laughs> no. <laughs> Barry Alvarez will not coach the team. One of the things I love about Bo Ryan is how he has done this. He worked his tail off Division Three, mm -hmm. and worked his way and worked his way up, and he became and he stayed within the state of Wisconsin. He's a Wisconsin guy. He's revered in that state, and you know he decided you know to do it now. And in large part, as opposed to when he first announced it, Greg Gard's dad had terminal cancer, and he passed away about a month and a half, two months ago, somewhere in those in that neighborhood. And you know he feels that all right, he's he's gone past that. He's gone through the grieving process. He's ready to take over. Does guard stay? We'll see. It's going to be very interesting, but I love how he's done this as far as making, you know, working his way up and grinding through the Division threes, the bus trips, you know, all the way up to finally getting the big job in Madison. And some of the stats have been trickling in on Twitter, just outstanding what he's been able to accomplish and his win-loss record and, and stuff like that. It's nice to see. Let's close with the NFL now, and Andy Dalton won't need surgery on his injured thumb. But how will this affect Cincinnati? And we do know it has a local effect here for us and Coldwater grad Keith Wenning getting activated to the 53-man roster. I think, you know, you never want to lose your starting quarterback at the end of the year. I think that's the worst time for it to happen because you're wanting to build toward the playoffs and keep the flow going, keep that rhythm. But the, the good news about the schedule for the Bengals is the last three weeks they play some of the lesser lights of the NFL. And they have that cushion over the Steelers. So a real good opportunity to still earn the bye, even though they've lost Andy Dalton. Uh, the hope is that if they can get the bye, that'll give them four weeks of games between when they need him. So if they can get that bye, they might be able to they get They say the timeline the was four to right. six, right? Yeah. So, so be... they're, you're hopeful you can get the bye that really five weeks from the date of the injury mm -hmm. to the date of the next game then, he could be healed and give you a good playoff outing. I, we'll just have to wait and see. Best case, the best case scenario in this break is what happened with, with the Bengals and Andy Dalton. He did not need surgery. Right. Had he needed surgery, had they needed to go in there, it's curtains on this season for him. And, you know, whether or not that would have been more of a spiral effect remains to be seen. I'm interested to see what A.J. McCarron does, to be honest with you. In his first full game, he had a nice touchdown pass to uh, A.J. Green that – he promptly punted into the middle of uh, the uh, Paul Brown Stadium end zone stands there. But, you know, let's see how this kid can do as the, uh, as the starting quarterback going forward. And, you know, they've got some winnable games on their schedule, in my opinion, too. Yeah, the good news is they'll only need to score about seven points next week to beat the 49ers, who have to be one of the worst teams offensively the NFL Just because you lost years. to the Browns, you're saying they're one of the worst teams in the history did, of the NFL? Did you watch that game? Offensively, they're one of the worst <laughs> teams I've seen in a long time. It's because they their offensive coordinator bad. is named Jeep, and he's not from Toledo. <laughs> yeah, and well, plus they don't have Carlos Hyde anymore. No. And they benched Colin Kaepernick, and Blaine Gabbard hasn't done any better. So the Bengals have that. Like I said, the schedule-wise, they got Denver. That's a yeah. tough one. But to have the 49ers and then the Ravens to end the season, those are two games they should win with the depth of talent that they have. They should be able to work around their quarterback unless he is absolutely awful. They should win those two games. Ryan Mallett will probably start that game for the Ravens unless he's later <laughs> sleeps in. <laughs> Good old Ryan Mallett. But I do like what the Bengals did with Keith Wenning, as mm -hmm. uh, Matt was referring to. Instead of going out and getting an also ran a retread like Ryan Mallett, like Aaron said, just promote the kid from the practice squad. He's been practicing with you. He knows the offense. If you know the worst happens and you have to play somebody, do you want a guy who's been with your team three days, or do you want a guy who at least knows the system and knows the players? A uh, good opportunity, perhaps, for Keith Wenning. And, and just to be on the active roster is a great opportunity in and of itself. Without a doubt, and he has been on the Bengals all year, so getting the reward late in the season, nice to see. Great job, as always, guys. Happy New Year. Yes, Merry sir. Christmas. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas to you as well, and thanks for joining us on Press Row. We'll see you in 2016.